My work husband. <laughs> the project that she just mentioned uh, that's on Amazon, he was director and writer, as well as the money man, as well as craft services, as well as the coach. <laughs> he was everything. So uh, this is Sean Mathis, uh, by Connie Collection. Mm -hmm. And next to him, I have Ms. Erin Buffet of Argentine Entertainment. She works out of LA and she is starting the number one independent film in 2008, Fireproof. Fireproof opened the doors to host a two-time Emmy Award winning series and made her a household name. So now what are you going to do? 
So usually when we release a film in the distribution world, we talk about this concept, windowing. And windowing is a concept that we're just talking about releasing your film strategically so that it goes in a sequence to help you maximize revenue. So the windows that all of your film is transactional video on demand, subscription video on demand, and ad supported video on demand. And if you go out of that sequence, you can very well cannibalize your opportunity um, in a transactional window. So if you go on the Netflix and your film's available for free, nobody's ever going to go back to iTunes and pay for it. And you very well, if you had like one of these really awesome films, you may have just lost out on thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue, and in some cases more. So there's a strategy to releasing a film, and, and you just kind of want to have a plan in place, and certainly we can help you come up with that plan, and as can, I'm sure, all the other panelists here. Yes, that's my neighbor, and they were great, and the, the sound was off, and the lighting was terrible, 
and I don't know what to do then. So I think that also, before you get to this point, you have to think, can I complete this project and it be something worth distributing? Um, you know, it's, it's more than, I mean, we all have some inner tale we'd like to tell, and we all have a fantastic story, but without the right budget and the right people, you probably cannot get that across uh, in a professional loving manner. O oftentimes you can. So, uh, you know, when I was going through it, I'd be able to say, well, what about Blair Ridge Project? You know, they did that for $10,000 on a video camera. Or what about Clerks and all that? It's like, those are one in a billion lightning in a bottle projects. You need to be very, very realistic and think that if I just play this movie from the, for an average layman off the street, can they sit through it? Will it be entertained by it? Well, is it something that they, uh, um, it, you know, they don't have to be moved to tears by it. It just has to be, honestly, watchable. Um, and those are certain qualities I think that we're, we don't want to overlook because before you spend your life savings on this, you need to make sure that it's something that someone is going to, it's even professional enough that someone would put it out. And, and guys like, see, that's people like Jason is a good example of people that they're there to sort of vet these things and to make sure that they are. And so once you kind of get to that level, then there typically is an audience. So they're typically, you know, they can, you can find an audience. But the product has to be packaged enough and good enough to get to that point. So we don't want to overlook it just being complete and watchable. <laughs> yes, because lots of times they're not. I hope don't want to bring in. You're like, oh my, the script was fantastic. Oh, this is great. But oh my gosh, that lead actor is terrible. And so people cannot even sit through it. So I think that a lot of it too is just, um, it's proving you can do it. You know, it's proving you can do it. So sometimes I think people want to make that story they've always wanted to tell out of the gate. When if you look at a lot of filmmakers that went up through this, there's this guy named Martin Corwin, I don't know about him, who's uh, done horror movies his whole life, but he's had James Cameron, who you guys know, he's had Brian Palma, he's all these guys make horror movies for him, they just want to prove that they can do it professionally, and then they can make the movies they could want to make after that. Then James Cameron could go on and make Avatar, but he made Piranha 2 first. So lots of times too, I think it is showing and proving to the distributor, uh, and making a relationship with them that look, I can make a professional product for a lower budget if you have a lower budget, and sort of this building blocks to getting to telling that story that you want to tell. So before you even start, make sure that there is an audience uh, out there so that if it's not the best, that they'll still want to see it. If that makes any sense. Yes. <laughs> So when you're thinking about doing this, there's one thing that will kill it, the deliverables. If you don't have all of your contracts for it, the music cue sheets, the clearances for public monuments, I did a documentary and I shot the hero of the Brooklyn Bridge myself, and Netflix wanted me to have clearance from the city of New York to do it, and I couldn't, and I lost the deal. You have to make sure yes. going into distribution that your deliverables are set. You can get a list of deliverables. Every distributor, distributor, excuse me, have different deliverables. A lot of them though are the same. Again, research who you're going after and what you're looking for. And already have a plan. Or already have that stuff ready when you go to them. Because it can and it will kill you. A lot of this, so I'm sorry, but a lot of this too is is what would attract, what attracts a distributor, right? So there's you know star like that could attract the distributor. So you think, can I afford a star? Do I want to put all my money in my star and not have any money for my production? So that those sort of things too, you got to think about. Is it a genre? So is it a genre picture where you know horror has kind of built an audience? There's certain genres that are kind of stars in themselves, and I I made more mistakes than anyone. And, putting money in a bad star, or then putting money in my camera, and I didn't have a star, and so that's another thing you can think about is, is what, what's going to attract them to it. You know, we all hope it's going to win all the Emmy Awards and the Palm Award, and it's going to be fantastic, but if it doesn't, is there something that they can sell, they can just show, you know, because think about it, when you look at Netflix or whatever, you're seeing box cover art, right? You're judging a movie now on the box cover art, because a lot of these places, too, you can't even put your reviews anymore. So you can't put a thumb up on it anymore. And some of them don't even have the stars listed. So it's just, there's a picture of a scary looking pale kid 
You know what I mean? Do, do I want to rent that? Do I not want to rent that? So um, you really need to have these packaged well and think about what, what would make someone click on that. And that the distributor thinks the same way. What's going to make these people want to click on that Pale Kid movie, right? Or that movie about whatever. Like, with a couple kissing or whatever. Yeah, that's right. With the guy with the gun, with Gary Busey with the gun, with uh, you know, a story about a, a inner city basketball team, like whatever it is, you just need to think, uh, it isn't, whatever, uh, the Joe Boy at home, the reason why he would pick that movie and click on it, it's the same reason why distributors don't want to click on it. So you just need to think about all these things before you start. Yeah, you think like a consumer, for sure. That's exactly right. And I have so many people in that say, well, there's a, there's a homeless guy that lives on the street, and he's got a fantastic tale, and I want to tell it, it's going to be black and white, and we're only going to allow it in French. And I'm like, that sounds fantastic. I, I will watch that. I'll be the one that'll watch that. I'll be the one that'll watch that. Uh, and, and also, I think what you have to consider is um, who you want. You have to think about your wish list in terms of what type of actors you want. And actors are broken down into different categories. You have the A list, B list, C list, and D list actors. And knowing that with those different lists come money. A list is going to be paying out the wazoo, you people like the Will Smith. Um, so, you know, depending on the type of budget you have, you want to make sure that you cast appropriately. So, you have to always keep that in mind when you are uh, putting together your, your budget for your project. Anytime you can hear some of my uh, horror stories, we're going to talk about a future project. So, that's it. Good luck. AtlantaIdeaStudio.com. And that's, um, yeah, feel free to contact me if you just want to chat. Everybody <laughs> Bernie Lawrence Watkins. You can follow me on social media at my A-T-T-Y Bernie. That's M-Y-A-T-T-Y B-E-R-N-I-E on IG and Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn, Bernie Lawrence Watkins, and my website is blwapc.com. That's B as in boy, L as in ladder, W as in water, A as in apple, P as in fall, C as in pad.com. Wow, I didn't hear that. I didn't do that. Yeah, you can follow the car. Yes, I have a car. So you can find me at our company's website, it's argentumentertainment.com, A-R-G-E-N-T-U-M. Um, you can email me, Erin, at Argentum Entertainment, E-R-I-N. You can call me on social media, message me, I'll, I'll come back to you. Actually, social media might be the quickest way to get a hold of me <laughs> sometimes. Uh, but yeah, you can follow us there, uh, check it out. We've, got, we've also got a subscription on there for um, to be notified when we are doing projects and we're looking for collaborators, whether it's writers or scripts or actors or directors or whatever it may be. Um, it won't be nonsense newsletters. It's literally just letting you know that there are job opportunities through something that we're doing. Um, we're gearing up later this year to shoot a romantic comedy here in Atlanta. Um, so we're really excited about that. It'll be our first production in Atlanta since expanding out here from Los Angeles. So we're stoked because um, I'm a Georgia girl, so I can't wait to shoot in Georgia. Um, so yeah, that's, you can check us out there. Oh, what's your email? Oh, at argentumentertainment.com. Yeah, the longest possible email address. <laughs> you can, yeah, I didn't do Argentum ENT. That would have been too easy. Uh, last name is Bethea, B-E-T-H-E-A. And on social media, I'm all just at Aaron Bethea everywhere. Um, yeah, um, I can be found on all social media. Um, Instagram, filmmaker underscore Sean Mathis, our, our company's website, Laconic Productions, L-A-C-O-N-I-C, Productions with an S. Um, email is info at laconicproductions.com, or just stop me on the way out of your call. Um, I'm working on currently two short films, six television series, uh, series and a feature film that we'll all do by the end of yeah. Well, it's not. It's just not my company. Um, I also I teach screenwriting and I do project development. 
So the six apostolic are clients of mine, and I'm taking them from the business from development to production. So those are the six series that we're working on. The short film of with my company, Macau, and my new company initiative, and the feature film is also with my company, Macau. So that's right. Cool. Okay, so I'm freelancing, so if we want to Follow us. I'm Jess Nina G on all social media. Alright, so we're gonna open the, the floor up. Oh Jess, I'm sorry, so hard. She can't see your screen. So it's a thousand miles away. It's okay, it's hard to see me in this car. Uh, but uh, I'm gonna do an educational webinar tomorrow. Um, for those of you that might be interested in what, you know, some of the stuff that I was talking about tonight. Um, you can just go to Distriber, which is our website. It's probably on a, a pamphlet that you have. Uh, go to distriber.com forward slash webinar, and you'll be able to sign up for that. Um, it, it's been a real pleasure being able to share this and this great panel. Uh, I really like everything that everybody had to say, so uh, I think uh, you know, a round of applause for everybody, not me, but Aww, everybody. You too. Thank you so much.